So in this video, I'm going to be covering fixing the stabilizer jacks. You can see one's missing over there. Uh, got some new ones I'm going to put on here and also get these lights fixed on the back of the trailer. I left lights out. I ordered some more on Amazon. Should be picking those up either today or tomorrow and uh, get that stuff all fixed up. Well, we're actually going to be adding some more D-style tie-down rings to the trailer. When I added the ones I did, I put one here and here and a couple back there, but I need another one right here. This location here is primarily where I end up trying to tie things down. I don't have anything to tie to. And we'll add another set on the back between the two stake pockets back there also. That'll just give me a couple extra places to add uh, some more, I'll call it utility, to the car trailer. One of the other main things we're going to be taking care of while I'm working on this trailer is replacing this deck. It is pretty beat up. As you can see here, I can just rip chunks off of it. In fact, it's so bad, I don't really want to haul my tractor anymore. I think I lost a piece of wood going down the road the other day. So we will get this thing redecked with some pressure treated. I think I'm gonna go with two by eights, maybe a two by 10 or two. And uh, should be good to go from there. This thing's pretty tore up though. I mean, to be honest with you, I could probably just rip the board out of here by hand. But that'll be the last major thing on this trailer. We'll sand off some of the underneath uh, metal supports and put a fresh coat of paint on them with some pressure treated wood on here. This thing should last me another 10 years. I can't imagine why it wouldn't. Well, we are back from the lumber yard and whoop, we are going to get the wood unloaded. Well, we're back at it today. So you guys should have just watched that time lapse of the trailer. Uh, we ripped the old deck off, uh, buffed all the old ru all the rust off, all the I beams, and started installing the new deck. Um, we installed the easy ones on the time lapse ones that are able to be kind of angled in. So today we're going to go ahead and flex the ones in the middle up, and then flex them back down to get them installed. Should prove to be pretty challenging, I suspect. Um, but before we get going on that, I've got a couple of items here that I ordered for the trailer. We have four, ooh, man, those are significantly smaller. They're half inch D-rings, weld on style. So we'll get, hopefully get those put on today. In here, <laughs> love these. I ordered some when I ordered the trailer parts. These are Raven, um, nitrile rubber gloves i was running low we also got the connectors for the electrical work i need to do on the trailer and one more thing in here what is this risk of suffocation plastic bags and films can be dangerous two red led round grommet truck trailer rv lights So here are the grommeted style main lights that I'm going to replace my backup lights with. So we're marking these last few boards 
So I'm going to mark this one and this one, and this one in the middle, the end of it's really wonky, so I'm actually going to cut that end off. Because we're removing, oh, I think it's 26 inches, if I remember right. Yeah. So we're cutting off 26 inches. than I thought it was going to. So you see that big gap, right? So it's, it's pushed up against the outside, but it's not quite in the channel. So we're in the channel down there. I'm gonna go spin you guys around here and show you what I'm doing down here. You can see how this is kind of crooked. Clamp's not even doing anything. That's not doing anything. All right. It's just rubbing on the other board. So a little love tap, and she's down and good to go. the last board getting put in. So I put that mark here in the center and I lined up that seam and then I worked my way left and right, or yeah, left and right, to get the spacing kind of equaled out. I mean, that'll help with water runoff and dirt and everything else too if you have a small gap between each board. I have marked the board behind me. I don't know if you can see this white line or not, but there's a white line there that is right over the top of the center beam underneath the wood. And the boards I removed, as you saw earlier, only had one single screw holding both, all of the boards down, one screw per board. And the, the way that the trailer's built, the, the, the forward and back side of the boards go into those grooves so that you don't need to screw there. Uh, and the center screw is really just designed to keep the boards from bowing up you saw how much that one snapped down a minute ago. So I went out and got uh, similar screws to what I saw installed here. And they are actually the, these right here. The, these are the screws. Um, this is inch, uh, excuse me, quarter by 20 by three inches long. Um, this specifically says approved for treated lumber. Not that, I don't know that that really matters or not, but they have this coating on them. Um, it's pretty nifty. And these are designed specifically to hold wood to metal. As you can see in a little picture here, and then it says again, designed to hold wood to metal. Um, this was nine bucks for this box. And there's, uh, I'd be willing to say there's 30 or, 30 or so screws in here. Um, These are pretty heavy duty. These are quarter inch. These are actually one size bigger than the screws I took out uh, because I wasn't sure when I went to the store what size they were, so I went with bigger is better, right? Well, I had to push pretty hard, as you saw, but it it drilled right through that metal, and that's pretty pretty thick stuff.
got the rest of the stuff for fixing the car trailer. Uh, most of this is from Amazon, except for one thing I ended up getting off of eBay. Hey, bionic face shield. Um, you've seen me in a couple of the videos, or even maybe this one, you might have that blue face shield I have with the, the glasses built in. Uh, I'm gonna try this new bionic face shield out. It should be more comfortable. So what do we got in this box? That is the new light for the back of the trailer. This is the package from eBay. Pre-built light boxes. Um, so these light boxes, these are pre-built light boxes to replace the backup lights on this trailer. This should be the side jacks I'm gonna use for stabilizers. pretty heavy. Up until this point, I've been extremely happy with my AHP welding machine. Uh, however, I went to go use it a few seconds ago and it didn't work. Um, I, it's too hot out here to troubleshoot a welding machine right now. So what I've done is switched over to my trusty Lincoln Electric uh, Power MIG 140C. zoom you guys in so you can take a look at what I got going on right there. So overall I'm really happy with this. Um, before I brought you guys on here I, I ground down this edge kind of like this one so that there was a lot of weld I was able to put in right so if that were on there like this, you can see how much buildup there is there. And I did the same thing on the bottom. So I think that meets my criteria for being able to uh, hold my tractor on the trailer. So we will go ahead and get this other one welded on. And I think I'm gonna be done for the day because it is hot out here. And welding in the hot sucks. So this downright, uh, our stabilizer or whatever you want to call it, uh, is going to be replaced by this 5,000 pound down jack, which is going to get welded right about there and will swivel down. That's my plan. guys the hassle of watching me do all the grinding and preparation this video is kind of getting long in the tooth so I have prepped the uh, stub outs for the jacks which will get welded here I have removed the old lights and I have prepped the new light boxes they're actually drying right now but I've ground the paint off of the trailer so once those dry a little bit I will grind those off real quick and get those ready to weld I'm a big fan of making up for my lack of welding skill with preparation. So the preparation on this was getting rid of that middle scale, just eliminates one more hassle for me. So let's get this thing tacked on here and get rolling. Get something done tonight. Something like this. I kind of envision I'm being left in sort of that position. I think I'm going to put a bead on the top of that bar, right here. So 
that solved a lot of the problem. It's definitely uh, much tighter using that well to take up that, that slot. Pin goes in. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. still really hot I just finished up you can see uh, this is a three pass weld I have a, a root pass and then two top covers uh, the same thing here this is a two pass with buildup on each end and a strong weave coming through the middle underneath I did a three pass because I was having a hard time so added an extra d-ring and I realized there's a d-ring right here and one right here which you just had a shot, but basically every time my tractor got on the trailer, this was the spot that the chain ended up being at in order to get the right angle, and I just, I needed one here. So that's on there now, and uh, one thing I need to do is add a little bit of weld across the top of this thing and then polish it off so that it takes up some of that slop. So I'll do that real quick right now. That's it. Just put that extra weld across the top of there, which takes up a lot of the play. So we will let these cool down for a few minutes and trim this marker tape off of here, paint this stuff, and we'll be done. I have saved you guys the hassle of watching me prep and paint these light boxes. These came from eBay. Uh, with lights and everything else, but they come unpainted just raw metal with the uh, Coating on the metal so I cleaned all that off and then I painted them black inside and out um, And then I match marked them where they're gonna go on the trailer here Which is right about there Cleaned off the paint as you can see here and here I'm gonna put a bead here here and down the side That's it. So three welds. That thing is on there rock solid. We'll then let, let it cool down for a few minutes. That's it. Light boxes, whew, still a little tacky, but in any case, I pulled the wires through the hole. So I drilled the hole on the frame member. So the wires ran back here, cut the old light off, drilled a new hole for the lights, drilled a small hole for the ground. They're neutral actually in this case. So we've got a black line, which is the, the brake lights. And then the yellow line is for the blank, right? For the blinker. So we have two terminal connectors, which we need to hook up to these LED style lights. And we will do that. Ground screw is in. Should be all good to go. Let's put this thing back together again. I'm gonna go ahead and go do the other one. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that. I'll bring you back when we're doing a walk around because I'm pretty much done at this point once I go wire that other one up. 
All right, so the trailer's all done. I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I didn't put on film because I actually needed to get it done really fast for a buddy of mine to come and borrow to move his tractor. So the things I did, I did work on are these lights. So I added these light boxes. I replaced the lights in them. Uh, these are LED lights. They're a lot brighter. They're easier for me to replace on the road somewhere. These are readily available at any major auto parts store. I also added these uh, jacks, which are used for the downright supports. So they'll probably stay in that position because if, if the back of the trailer drops down that much, it's not a big deal. In fact, it actually, because of the angle of the ramps, it actually works better. So those are quick adjust jacks. Um, if I need to really stabilize the trailer, I can actually lift up the back end off and use the front jack and get the whole trailer off the ground. Um, if I had to use it as like a work table or a workbench or something like that, make it super stable. Um, these are a lot better than what was on here before. I did leave the old angle iron that was housing the old lights in place and I welded the new light boxes inside of those so that the foot from the jack would touch on the angle iron. So this is quarter inch angle iron. It's four by, or excuse me, it's, I don't even know, it's big. It's three by five, I think. So the jack foot pushes on that so it's nice and stable. The other stuff we added uh, were the D-rings. So I added two more D-rings on each side. And this location, even though I have a D-ring here, and up here, and I had stake pockets, this always seemed to be the spot where I needed to be able to tie the tractor down. So I just put one there. I added one right where the chains always ended up being at. And it, uh, it seemed to work out really well when my buddy borrowed it to move his tractor. So this other D-ring right here, this was the other one we added. Uh, once again, same thing, I have one here, which was just slightly too far back, and a stake pocket and a D-ring up here which are just slightly too far forward. This one seems to be just right. Uh, we obviously redecked the trailer with pressure treated lumber. Uh, those are pretty pricey. That was uh, 380 bucks ish. Um, but it worked out really well and it seems to be working and held up really well when he used it to move his tractor the other day. One of the things I didn't cover on video was some of the upgrades I made to the electrical system and the brake system. Um, I got in a rush because I needed to get it done for him to use it. And I basically upgraded to a wiring harness system here, uh, seven pin. This is uh, one of those uh, rubberized coated ones instead of that flimsy sheet stuff you buy and they put over the top of wires. This is all, all uh, molded together, nice and sturdy. There's a wiring harness right here. So if I have electrical problems, I can always open this and troubleshoot from here. This also gave me the ability later on down the road if I want to add a winch or some other light or something to the trailer, this has an ex, uh, extra port to add power so that we can power a winch or something else off of the truck. I ended up replacing the breakaway system on this tra trailer also. Got the breakaway wire here, there's a new breakaway switch on the side, and I replaced the battery and the box. Um, this one does have the the test, charge, and fully charged indicators on it. Not really required, but it's kind of nice to have that. And then we did a, a paint job, right? I, I went through and I touched everything up and got the paint looking good again. So it's uh, better than brand new, to be honest with you. Add a lot of nice features to it. Pretty happy with it. it pretty much wraps up the trailer mods and uh, it'll sit here for a while until I get the rest of my tractor put back together be a couple of videos about that. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, by all means, leave any questions or comments down below. Happy to answer all those. Um, yeah, check out uh, my welding video here. Uh, welder broke actually while I was working on this trailer, so I, I got a video about it, the problems I was having, and then I have another video down here about the warranty and sending it back to AHP. So check those out, and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. That always helps me out. I appreciate it.